I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty nervous about this one, but we're gonna power through. Hey friends, it's Hawk. Today we have another installment in the Reluctant Reader series in which I will be reading sci-fi. So I have a very complicated relationship with sci-fi. Like many teens of my generation, I liked the dystopian sci-fi of The Hunger Games, but that was pretty much where it ended for me. I just don't like things set in space. I have a fear of space in general, so that also kind of hinders me. It's an interesting phobia because Lord knows the planet could be on fire and I'd be like, guess I'm burning because I'm not going into space. <laughs> but there are some novels that I enjoy. I tend to enjoy classic science fiction like Brave New World by Aldous Huxley and Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip K. Dick. Those are two that I really enjoyed. I also really like the Detroit Become Human video game, which is also a sci-fi video game, but it's like a very heavily story-based game. I don't really like any sci-fi movies. I like some Star Wars movies. I like the idea of them more than I actually like them in practice. I have a very complicated relationship with sci-fi. It's very, very, very hit or miss for me and it's usually a miss. So I'm hoping that I find some new books that I can point to to say, see, I just don't hate sci-fi. It's, it's just, I'm picky, you know? <laughs> so the first book that I'm gonna be reading for this video is Machines Like Me by Ian McEwan. This is about a man who is lonely and he decides to buy an android and there's like a love triangle between him and this girl and the android. And I honestly just really love android content. That's why I picked this up. I really, really like the questions that are often posed by android based books. Like what does it mean to be human? What does it mean to have a soul? That type of thing. So I lean more towards android content when I have to read sci-fi. Hopefully because this is heavily based in the world, which again, very important to me, don't like space. <laughs> I'm hoping that I will enjoy this one. Also, it's written by the guy who wrote Atonement, which I thought was extremely weird. The next book that I'm gonna be reading is The Man in the High Castle by Philip K. Dick. As you may remember from when I talked about sci-fi that I liked, do Android Stream of Electric Sheep is one that I like, and it was written by the same author, Philip K. Dick. This one is a sort of alternative history book, which I already am into, about if the Allies had lost World War II. I just find that a very interesting concept. So it's kind of a dystopian novel. I, I'm i kind of over dystopia in general, but because it's Philip K. Dick, because it's a classic, and because it's not very long, I thought, you know, this is a good time to give it a chance. And I like alternate history, so I'm hoping that this one will be a hit for me. I know it's a beloved classic, so hopefully I don't anger a lot of people by disliking it. The last one that I'm gonna be reading is kind of, this one is kind of where I'm pushing myself. The way that Birthday Girl was for me, you know, pushing the boundaries of what I found acceptable within the genre. This one is functioning that way for me. And it is Defy the Stars by Claudia Gray. This one is pushing the envelope for me because it is set in space. And as I already established, I tend to not like things that are set in space, but it has an android. And I have heard really good things about this book, just in general, about this series. It's about an interstellar war. That's boring to me, but it, I'm gonna give it a chance because so many people like it and I could like it too. I mean, there's an Android. I, it's, I'm just trying to push the envelope here for me. If I sound nervous about this video, it's because I am. Because unlike romance, which I like, you know, I like romance and other things. So it's easy to extrapolate that I will like romance when it is presented as the main focus of a story. For sci-fi, it's like even more of a specific genre. You know, it's not just like, we are taking an element that is often found in every other story and making it a bigger part of the story. It's like, no, this is a genre and there are things in this genre that you have previously not liked. I'm just hoping for the best. I have, I have hopes and dreams about this video that I will come out and I will be happy and I will have a new favorite book perhaps, but I don't know, we'll have to see. Come along for the ride with me, thank you. <laughs> okay, so I decided to start with The Man in the High Castle just because I had access to an audiobook of it and I kinda wanted to get some stuff done today. I'm only two chapters in, but I kinda wanted to talk about it because there's a lot going on and I don't know how to feel about this, so let's just talk about it. First and foremost, this book is extremely racially charged 
for me just being two chapters in. I mean, obviously I kind of figured that it would be considering the material, which if you don't remember from a second ago of when I was talking about it, it's about if the Axis powers won World War II. So obviously, you know, if Nazis are in power, there's gonna be some racially charged stuff. I don't think that I was prepared for the amount. So this is in the first two chapters, so I don't think it's a spoiler really, but basically they were talking about how the Germans killed almost every black person in Africa. Like they almost wiped out the entirety of Africa and then enslaved a bunch of other Africans in America again. So there's that whole thing going on. And then you have just the commentary on Japanese people because Japanese people are in power in the area that this takes place in. Like the Japanese people have the West Coast. Um, so there's that. There's some racially charged language. Some would even say slurs. It's a lot to just you know, put all that in the first two chapters, I'm gonna say. But I get that this book is kind of short, it's less than 300 pages, so I guess you had to, you know, just get in there and get it started right when you could. Um, but yeah, it kind of just threw me for a loop. So I wanted to start by saying that. Also, there's multiple perspectives in this book, which is just something that I just, I'm tired. I'm tired of multiple perspectives. It's it's kind of unfair to say because this book is older and a lot of the books that I've been reading that have multiple perspectives have been newer books, but I don't, I'm just tired of it. And there's no like sectioning off. So there's not even like a paragraph break. It's just like you are now in someone else's perspective. So that's kind of off-putting to me. There's just a lot going on. I think that Philip K. Dick is really great. Um, with conceptual stuff like his concepts are really great going into sci-fi novels but I think that the execution is where it kind of falls off for me a little bit I'm not saying that this is bad or anything because I don't think that it is honey you've got a big storm coming I kind of wish that someone else had written this like perhaps a Jewish person or a black person because I just feel like it would be more of an interesting story coming from someone who would have been or continues to be because we still have Nazis but would have been directly affected by Nazism taking over in America if that makes sense. I just think that it would have been a lot more interesting if it wasn't coming from a straight white goy. Uh, <laughs> I think that it would have been a, a lot better so I'm gonna continue to read it, but that's my initial impression and it's just kind of, it's kind of off-putting, but I will continue to read it. So it's literally like three seconds after I last made a comment about what was going on and I stumbled across a line as I was listening to the audiobook and I just had to tell you guys about it. I don't wanna say it because there's a slur involved and I just don't wanna say it, but I will put a picture of the section that I just, had the misfortune of reading right here. Now we don't have time to unpack all of that. So yeah, literally just talked about how this book is racially charged and I'm very uncomfortable right now. I don't know if I wanna keep reading this, but I think that I will give it a little while. It's just so much, so fast. I just, I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know. It's a lot. This book was so bad. <laughs> it was so bad. I've never read a book that I have had such a visceral reaction to of like just hating it. I hated this book. I can't even, oh my God. <laughs> Beyond the stuff that I already discussed with like it being problematic in a lot of ways in the classical sense, it also was just not good. Like the plot was not good. Or engaging whatsoever. The premise was the only thing holding it together because also the characters sucked. So like what do you have? There's no atmosphere, the writing is bad, the characters are bad, the plot is bad. I just... I don't know. This won a Hugo Award. Huh? Huh? What? This book was so bad it gave me a migraine and it won a Hugo Award? Okay. I need to just move on from that because I can't like, 
Something that I am learning about myself is that I'm not interested in alternative history books written by white straight men. Like, I'm just not. So much of history is already written from that perspective that I just find myself bored with the concept of them also getting to rewrite it. So I hated that so much. So we're off to a great start in this Reluctant Reader series. Am I, is this gonna happen to me every time? Is the worst book always gonna be first? Because I felt that way with romance and the guy on the right, which I also hated, not this much, but I'm praying that the next ones are good because Jesus Christ. So I decided to make Machines Like Me my next book because it's the one I have the highest hopes for and after The Man in the High Castle, I just didn't want to uh, mess around with something I could potentially not like. I mean, all of these have the potential for me not liking it, which leads me into uh, my discussion of this. It's not bad per se, it's just not what I was expecting. It's a very insular view at life with an android. It's just about this threesome of the android, this woman, that uh, the main character Charlie is in love with and then Charlie himself. I don't love love triangles first and foremost. I also really don't like how the narrator <laughs> describes the woman. I feel like maybe that's the point um, is that he, he has a problematic view of her, but yeah, I don't know. All the stuff with the android is good. I still really, really, really love androids. They're a narrative device that I just, can never get enough of. I just really love androids in fiction. It is posing all the questions that I want to. The android himself is kind of annoying. Like he goes on these philosophical diatribes because he's just kind of, it makes sense why he's doing it because he's like figuring out the human psyche and stuff. This whole thing is a little bit confusing to me. Just, I just don't understand the point of a lot of things that are included. Specifically the setting, which is in the 1980s. Um, so it's like, like the freaking man in the high castle it's another alternative fiction book but i can't understand like the narrative decision behind making it set in the 80s it seems extremely improbable the basis of why androids exist is that alan turing lived and he therefore was able to come up with a development that allowed for this level of artificial intelligence first of all i just don't buy it uh at all <laughs> maybe it's to set us in a place that's somewhat familiar but they, there's just like weird changes. Like Tolstoy wrote a book called All's Well That Ends Well. Um, John Lennon is still alive and the All You Need Is Love was just kind of like panned by critics, I guess. There's just a lot of weird changes and I just don't see the point for a lot of them. I don't wanna give the impression that I'm not enjoying it. I definitely, the intrigue is there. I'm gonna finish it 100%. I'm very interested to see how it ends or like where the story goes. But as of now, I'm just like, what is happening? And why is it happening? I wanna say if I was reading more closely, I would have a better understanding of what the reasoning is behind some of the choices that are being made, but yeah, I don't know. Regardless, I'm gonna finish it up, um, and if nothing happens of note for me to tell you, then I will let you know when I'm done with this book. Something else I forgot to mention is that there's this weird subplot with the woman that she was allegedly, and I say allegedly because there's a lot of harping on her being dishonest, um, she allegedly was raped by her ex-boyfriend and he was put in jail and now he's getting out of jail and apparently he threatened her according to her so yeah there's that going on i just don't know how this plot is gonna wrap itself up but we'll see we'll find out together so i really hope that McEwen is making charlie a terrible person on purpose because Miranda just told the story surrounding her situation with the rape um, and his first thought is that he's so glad that they can love each other properly now because she was honest with him. Not like sympathy, not <laughs> any sort of thoughts about her. He's just like, oh, now we can actually be in love because she's told me the truth about her terrible story. I hate it. Oh my god, I hate it. Yeah, I really 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 hope that he's supposed to be a terrible person because if not <laughs> It makes me very uncomfortable. Oh my god, this video is going badly So I finished machines like me last night. I finished it kind of late So I didn't really want to uh, do this whole thing 
at like midnight. So I waited until today. And I was also kind of hoping I would be less angry because let me read you the Goodreads review that I left for this book at around 12.30 last night. Dull, meandering, desperate to be something deeper than it was. I mean this as respectfully as possible. By the time I got to the 75% mark, I felt the kindest thing would be to take this book out back and shoot it. This sounds like a one-star review, but there were brief glimpses of something worthwhile and a mound of self-indulgent dribble. So that was my review at midnight last night, and I kind of stand behind it. Here's the thing. I know how to read well, and I know how to read to pick up messages and themes in a book, and if I, a semi-adept reader, can't understand your messages, then it's not my fault as a reader, it's your fault as a writer. So... This was not good. Um, the subplots were boring and offensive. The setting made no sense for the story. I It just felt added in as, like I said, self-indulgence. I mean, there was some writing in there that was good and there were some concepts in there that he would like kind of address, but then immediately roll back on. And there was a lot of like domestic fluff for what is supposed to be a novel about androids or at least what is presented and marketed as a novel about androids i just <laughs> there was so much stupid shit going on the ending was dumb i didn't like it <laughs> and i'm very upset about the fact because i'm on the second book and i've given one one star and the other two stars so this reluctant reader is not going well. I'm hoping that Defy the Stars is gonna be a winner for me. Maybe the takeaway from this video is that I just don't like the majority of sci-fi and unless someone says this is really, really, really good. Although I read The Martian and everyone said it was really, really good and I did not like it. So I don't know. I don't wanna rule out a genre entirely, but this is just not, it's not going well. And if it was gonna go well with anything, it was gonna go well with a book about androids. So we're gonna have to see. It's funny because Defy the Stars is the one that I was most apprehensive about because it's set in space and I don't like books set in space generally. So <laughs> I'm feeling a little hopeless right now, you guys. <laughs> I guess I'll just have to soldier on. This video is going so poorly. <laughs> so I am a little bit over 50% of the way through Defy the Stars and or around me are familiar face. I think in reading it I've found the thing that most turns me off about a lot of like sci-fi set in space and it's that it often involves intergalactic type wars and I just I just find them so boring. I feel like it's better for movies because movies you can like show things exploding and having all that drama but with books it just does not hit for me so I don't know but this is better than the others I think just in terms of keeping me entertained and interested the characters are also better so there's that I mean and I have you know exhaled sharply out of my nose a few times which, as we all know, is as good of a laugh as most authors get. <laughs> I feel bad that I'm reporting this and there's not much to report, but, you know, I feel like, I feel like maybe sci-fi ain't it. I'm gonna finish this. It's kind of annoying because it's 500 pages, but <laughs> I will finish it just at least, if, if for nothing, just for the sake of my Goodreads challenge, so... Yeah, I'll tell you guys when I'm done or if anything interesting happens. Do like the Android though. This book saved it. It saved the video, friends. <laughs> so I finished Defy the Stars and I gave it three stars. That may not sound like it saved the video, but believe me, after reading just hot, steaming piles of garbage for the entirety of this video, I'm happy with three stars. And it's like a high three stars, you know? I enjoyed it considerably. Um, there were definitely some parts that were slow, but I really liked the characters. I really liked their relationship to each other. I really liked the subplot of Abel sort of coming to grips with his humanity. I believe this is a trilogy. I am not going to be picking up the next books, I'm gonna have to say. Just because, like I said, the overarching plot just doesn't do anything for me. Like I said, don't care for space, for Star Wars, if you will, for space sort of intergalactic 
fighting amongst planets. It's just very boring to me and I wish it wasn't that way but what can I say? That's just the way it is. So let's do a final wrap up. Three stars for Defy the Stars by Claudia Gray. Good characters, okay plot, better subplot. Like that it dealt with actual questions posed by the android in the story. Unlike Machines Like Me, which I gave two stars, barely scraping into the two star category. This had very uninteresting characters, a very uninteresting plot, did not ask the questions that I wanted it to ask, did not make use of the fact that it is a book about androids, it just seemed to kind of ignore that. The only reason that it got two stars instead of one is that there were some lines and some general ideas in there that were interesting. And I liked Ian McEwan's writing style, but that's all that saved it. It's barely scraping at a two star. And then of course we have our one star, the trash that is the man in the high castle. I'm sorry. I don't mean to call it trash, but my experience reading it was trash. Terrible plot. Should not have been written by a white dude. <laughs> a white dude who is also not Jewish. Just yeah, this, this, mm -mm, mm -mm. bad characters, bad plot, bad everything. Biggest disappointment. My takeaway from this video is honestly that I am just not the biggest fan of sci-fi and that's okay. You know, I'm not gonna rule it out. If something sounds interesting to me, I will definitely pick it up. But overall, I don't think I should force myself to read sci-fi just because other people think it's good. That's my takeaway because yeah. It's gonna be hard for a while after this video to get me to read any sci-fi book, so. Thank you guys for joining me. This was a journey, um, so I appreciate your presence in me just suffering for almost the entirety of this video. <laughs> I hope you guys have an amazing day. I will see you next time. Bye!